What's up, guys? This is your host, Danny Baylor, Danny Cakes, and you are listening to the Immeasurably More podcast. All right, guys, welcome back. I'm so excited to jump into today's topic. But real quick, I just want to let you know if you haven't had a chance to listen to my last podcast on what I referred to as my first Jesus encounter, I totally encourage you to go take a listen. Um, obviously, it was something that I shared. I was super nervous to talk about, and I have gotten so much good feedback. I'm just like literally in tears after every message, you guys. So I love hearing from you, and I'm so excited for you to check it out if you haven't yet. And I hope that you feel connection. I hope that you relate. I feel that hope that you... Um, experience some breakthrough spiritually, and uh, you just see Jesus in a new light, the way that I see myself. So go ahead and check that out, episode nine, my first Jesus encounter. And so actually, I had the pleasure of being a guest on my very first podcast with Deanna Heron on her podcast show last Tuesday, and we actually spoke on a very similar topic to what I will be talking about today. So go check out Deanna Heron's podcast show and... Um, see what we chatted about. So speaking of that, I want to talk about the things on this podcast, especially not only what God can do through us, right? Immeasurably more, but the things that we don't talk about enough. And these always seem to be the most vulnerable things for me, like I say over and over, but I really love it. And I I love opening up about like I said, that it's like these secrets that we like keep with our within ourselves, and we need to start talking about. We need to start sharing. And so, as always, I'm willing to go first. I'm willing to be open and raw and vulnerable with you guys in hopes that these start sparking some conversations with you and your loved ones, and hopefully just yourself. So we have to learn to be honest with ourselves, and I'm going to kind of get into that. But I see there is a major problem with our current perspective on dating and love. It's so overlooked. It's taken so lightly. And we need to be more serious about this, you guys. So let's talk about dating, singleness, relationships, marriage, and yes, even sex. (laughs) So I'm not just talking a little bit of chit chat about love stories, but I'm talking about God's perspective on all of these topics, you guys, and his desire for us. I want to bring up my mistakes and what I feel like God has put on my heart and the wisdom that I've gained over the last few years. I want to be clear also that in no way do I have the intention to be judgmental or tell you guys what to do. I'm very aware of how sensitive this subject is, which is why I'm willing to speak on it. But I'm just here to share my heart and share with you what has what God has revealed to me, like I said, over the last few years in his truth about love and dating. So I want to cover a couple of different topics on this episode. And some of these things I get the most questions about, um, as well as my perspective on dating in today's world. So I would say one of the biggest things that set me apart in my life is my choice and my choices when it comes to dating and sex. So yes, I'm going to cover it all. This topic actually came to my mind last summer, and it's actually the first extremely vulnerable topic that came to me for me to share on so much that I remember posting about it. I was going to post about it on on social media, on Instagram, and uh, I was really nervous about opening up about it. I don't know why, because it seems like it's something that we're all so desperate for. And honestly, I think this idea kind of stirred up what soon developed the idea of this podcast even. So... You guys, there are so many people that we are just seeking for someone else to open up about the hardest topics in our lives, right? So I feel like this was one of them. And it's crazy because I think that we keep hidden the most intimate things to ourselves. We lie and we manipulate our situations, and it's such a dangerous place to be in. I know firsthand because I've experienced so much hurt and denial in my last relationship. And now that I'm out of it, I have a new lens. I see things differently. I see clearly and I see how I thought in that relationship and outside of it. And so I wanted to begin sharing it. No matter how uncool it might come off in some ways, it's time to open up about these things. So once I made that post about opening up on my perspective on dating, 
I got so much feedback. Um, and the one thing that scared me made me feel the most vulnerable, connected to me the most with so many people and most of you guys being women. So it's just such, that's like that sneaky deception from the enemy once again, right? Just keep it to yourself. No one will understand or relate. Your relationship isn't that bad. It could be worse. It's been worse. Do you really think there's someone better? Do you really think it's worth telling your story? You're just going to make a fool of yourselves. So these are all these thoughts that we have all the time, but we need to talk about this. I needed to open up about this. So the enemy loves for us to hide all the things that we need to talk about, right? And again, you guys, I know I always talk about like isolation, keeping things to ourselves. It's just, it's not a safe space. So after I made that post, I had a friend who sent me a book about where it's called Relationship Goals. And I was so excited about it. I posted about it and I had this instant idea. I was like, what if I started a book club? And so I kind of posted a little poll and asked, you know, if anybody would want to do a like an online Zoom book club with me about this book, which I had never done before. I've never done a book club. I don't even like reading. And got so many people on board, super excited to do it. And I just really felt led and realized, you guys, how many of us, especially women, right? My heart's women. Uh, typically, my audience is women. But we are seeking out direction in relationships. Like, what is God's intention for relationships? What are we missing? Why is it so hard? Because God designed it and he designed love for him to be at the center of it. You guys, God is love and God created marriage. And I've learned and observed when we don't do it God's way, it gets messy. We get hurt. We hurt other people. We try to manipulate what God is telling us that they must be the one because this, that, and the other. And in the end, in my experience, I was the one who became manipulated I gave and I gave and I gave and eventually I became resentful and sadly lost so much of myself, especially spiritually. So our roles in that relationship were not balanced the way that God had intended. How do I know these roles? You guys, my parents showed me firsthand my whole life what that looked like. Are they perfect? No, but they're pretty dang amazing. So nothing shows God's love like a marriage in this marriage. So when I say I'm talking about my my parents' marriage, like you guys, this totally showed God's grace, forgiveness, respect, the sacrifices it takes. There was a gentleness, a kindness, and a peace. And I have still never seen anything like their marriage. So my dad is, I like to say, he's basically a spinning image of Jesus himself. He might not agree, but I think so. He can literally be so gentle and kind. He's one of the most forgiving people I've ever known. He's so humble in spirit and always seeking God's heart. This man, he has set the bar so high and he's always been our rock. He's our spiritual leader and we are firm and led strongly in our walks because he has always set the pace. And my mom, she honors him. She serves him. She knows the ins and outs of his love languages and she loves him generously and always cheerfully. She has always taught us to put him first out of respect for the sacrifices he makes They're a team, and together they honor God, and together they seek God's will. The Bible talks about a cord of three strands and how it is not easily broken. Talking about a relationship in sync and a communication with God, and that's something that she always talks about. So in a nutshell, I've been exposed my whole life to a love that truly exemplifies God's love for us and His real intention for marriage. And this story beats every fairy tale, you guys. So in May, they'll actually be celebrating 40 years of marriage. And that was, you guys, a three-week dating period that they had. That was enough for them to just both know. My mom always says, I just knew you was my love. (laughs) And I realized that was in 1981. But I also gave more credit to the, the God that I serve. So God knew. God brought them together. And therefore, while God has joined together, let no man separate. What it just said in Mark 10, 9. So with that being said, it's made it easier for me to wait, knowing that that sort of peace, that sort of love exists. And it's what God wants for us. And it's what we are worthy of. Now, my parents were married at 21. And my story is obviously different, which brings me to singleness. You guys, why do we act like this is a pitied word, right? Because nowadays, somehow relationships are glorified. 
And then we have this misconception that those of us who are single are just somehow forgotten or unchosen, like there's something wrong with us. What a dangerous lie from the devil himself. Nothing like those sort of thoughts is sending you into the wrong relationships that you don't feel left out, right? Not to say that's always the case, but I think that's most commonly. And, you know, we grow up watching these princess movies and these fairy tales because typically the end all goal we've been trained to believe is to end up with our Prince Charming. Dude, you guys, like we have to break this mentality. And when I say dude, I also mean my fellow women, but we believe this lie. There's something wrong with us that we're devalued. We're not pretty enough. What a load of crap. Yes, crap. (laughs) I just said crap, but it's not what God says about us. And next, we're tempted to question if there's something wrong with God because our current life hasn't matched our fantasized timeline of a wedding ring or having kids of our own just yet. So I'm here to set this straight. This idea of feeling like a significant other will fix all of our problems or bring us the most joy or just make us feel less like a loser if we're being brutally honest, right? And you guys, I'm saying this all to myself. Like I'm talking to myself too, all right? I have all these thoughts. But I just remember hearing this like striking reality that the majority of people are in the wrong relationship. I know firsthand there's nothing that will make you feel more alone than being in the wrong relationship. And I have become like hyper aware now of my feelings in relationships, romantic or not. I, I can like catch this denial, ask myself like Danny to Danny. There's no one else in my head besides me and me. So why can't I just admit this? Because acknowledging the truth is hard and it is literally terrifying. But if we don't do it now, you guys, it only gets worse. I was in denial for a very, very long time. Finally being open and honest with someone else about my relationship was the one conversation that set me free. Again, if you don't know who that person can be for you, you guys, please slide into my DMs. I've learned to be a good and gracious listener. And the last thing I want for you to do is to do this on your own because you don't know who else to talk to. So in place, you just feel like you're going to be stuck. That's not the point of this episode. Let's talk about the hard things and I am willing to listen to you. So what about confusion? I get this question so often you know, what, what if I just don't know the answer? What if I don't know if I'm supposed to be this person? How do I know when it's time to walk away? Number one, God is not a God of confusion. And I think I've told this story before, but I remember talking to a client years and years ago about a relationship. And I was like, look, have you ever just been in a situation where you just don't even know the answer? Like, I'm like, I'm praying, like I'm talking to God, like I'm questioning, I'm trying to figure out the answer. (laughs) Like I'm trying to like do the right thing. And she's like, yes, it's because when I felt confused, I didn't know the answer. It's because I didn't like the answer. And that is such a big pill to swallow, right? Love is hard. And, you know, something I think it's so, was so hard for me to hear, but so powerful for my mom. I look up to my mom so much. She's so hard on herself, but I love her. And she's set the tone for me in so many ways. She doesn't even know, but that woman, she's like so wise. And she always said, Danielle, love is never a reason to get married. And we cannot get caught up in that answer. And there's so many people, there are lots of boys that I have loved and do love, but doesn't mean that, you know, that's God's best for me. And it's a really, really fine line that we need to be cautious of and we need to be prayerful about. And when you're feeling that confusion, it's probably because you don't like the answer. So I'm just telling you that just that you can decide, you can, um, you know, bring that to God and pray about it. But I also believe that God can give you peace when it's time to walk away. And so number two, God is the God of peace. And if you have peace and zero doubts, then work through what's going on. But you know, nothing is perfect. But if you also know that you're kind of in denial, it's time to walk away. Um, I remember talking to a client, um, about my recent breakup and the difference between different relationships. And she was about to get married and she's like, you know, and this, this, the man I'm about to marry, she's like, I just, I just know. She said, you know, we have that. You just know it's the one, right. But she's like, no. And not only do I just know, but I don't have any doubts. I don't have any fears. And all of the guys that I've dated you guys, which isn't very many, but, um, I, 
I did have doubts. I did have like just little lingering doubts and questions. And that's how you know. And if something's like tugging on your heart and you know, you guys, I understand like this is, it's terrifying. Like it's scary to ask God, like, is this the person? Like, do I keep going? Um, But if we don't do it now, it's just, it's not going to get any easier. Right. But we have to just trust that God knows better. And, um, to listen to those tugs. And that I know is like how we'll know when we find the right one, when we come into, not when we find them, I don't think that we like find each other. I think that God aligns our paths. Um, but when we do, it's like, that's when we'll know because we'll know what it's like to have doubts. And so we'll know what peace feels like. We'll know what no confusion feels like. And, you know, that's really such a scary thought to think about having doubts because you know, my denial at the time in my last relationship, it didn't just affect me then. It didn't just affect my relationship. It affected my mindset. It affected what I thought of myself. And it still affects me now, you guys. The lies and the hurt and manipulation, they creep back in from time to time. And for some reason, it's happening a lot lately. And I'm trying to work through it. It's just like I have these like triggering thoughts that just it breaks me. And I think, you know, I think there's some things that I still need to work through even years later. And that's a thing. Like that was a three relationship. And here I am two years later, and I'm still dealing with things that, that hurt me or lies that I was told that made me feel lesser and was so unfair. You know, I didn't need to like allow myself to go through that hurt. And it just, I feel like God's like just sharing with me not to be like, you did this and this is what you shouldn't have done. You shouldn't have been in that relationship. That's not the case at all. It's just for him to remind me, Hey, I want you to stress how important it is to date cautiously and who we date. And that relationship was also something that, you know, I was like, Oh, we're young and he's so sweet. And you know, not that he's a bad person anytime, but like, it's still, there was so many things that were like attractive to me, but like the one main thing, you guys, the one main thing was that like, he did not follow God the way that I did. He wasn't going in the same direction as I was spiritually. And uh, I remember at my, one of my cousin's weddings, they had like this the pastor was talking about this visual, I just, uh, like a visual of like a triangle and God's at the top and you and your spouse are at the bottom corners, right? And so when you're chasing each other, eventually you pass each other up. But if you're both going towards God, towards the tip of that, that triangle, you become closer. And that is such, it's such a great visual of what that looks like, because it was true. Like I was running towards him. In some ways he was running towards me. I always felt like I was giving, giving, giving way more, you know, and there's resent and we feel like we're just passing each other. We're not going the same direction. And it's, it's such a fine line. And I just, I need to stress. I need to talk about dating. I need to share with you guys how important it is who we choose, not just long-term, but right now, who are you casually dating? I don't know about you, but for me, like I love hard, like when When I meet somebody and there's something that, you know, I treasure about them or I value about them, it's very quick for me to like hope for for something out of it and to care for them and to love them. It's really hard to break that. And so this last relationship, you know, he was special to me and he treated me differently. And um, it was just, I don't feel like I was prayerful enough. I don't feel like even, even if I was prayerful, I didn't you know, I still ignored some of the obvious things that just led me down, not necessarily a bad road, but just a road where, um, I didn't really want to be. And I was just, I, I went in too deep innocently without knowing it, you know, and just cause I just wasn't cautious enough. And it's, it's hard because we have feelings for people so early, you know, it's like, you start having a question on boys. And when you're in like elementary school, like I was boy crazy for as long as I can remember, you know, um, but it's so, so important for us to be in tune with God and like what he has in store for us and what he, you know, intends for us for marriage and dating and, you know, our, our, especially as girls, we're so, we're so precious. Our hearts are so valuable. And it just, I think all the things that I talk about just leads me to the point where like, if there's something that breaks my heart, I just want to talk about it. I just want to share. I want to bring light to it. Um, and again, so we got to talk about these hard things we just take this so lightly. We take dating so lightly and you know, gosh, don't even get me started on sex. That's like a whole nother depth to our soul. Right. But like even just dating, I mean, 
the little things, you know, can get us so excited and these little sparks. And then we hope for all this like lifetime fantasy with this person. And it's like never God's intention before we know it. We're in too deep, you know, and it's hard to break off. And then we're hurt. And like I said, it's like, it doesn't just affect you right now. It affects who I am. Um, not, I'm, I'm saying like, not even just in that moment years ago in that relationship, it affects me, you know, still, the hurts and the things that were tied to that relationship affect who I am, if that makes sense. That's kind of what I want to focus on. It's not just like the romantic part of it. It's like who I decided I saw myself as because that person made me feel that way or people connected to that relationship, you know, made me feel. And it's like, gosh, you guys, it, it's still like, it's like breaking me a lot. Like not breaking me, but it's really hurting me a lot lately. And if that's something that you're feeling and you feel like past hurts or something that are triggering for you, I just remind you like just to pray like God's God's truth over you and first of all, acknowledge it. I think there's a lot of things that I, I didn't really work through when I should have. I just got busy trying to like, you know, fill the void and kind of like dull my hurt in other ways with more positive things, which was great at the time. But now I'm like, hey, I'm still needing to like mourn through some of those things. And so acknowledge it, give it to God and ask him to remind you how he sees you, what he has for you, and that we are just moving forward. That was for somebody and it was for me for sure. But we need to approach dating more cautiously. It's like, do I fully believe God is using my mistakes for his glory now? Absolutely. But could I have avoided so much of my hurt had I listened to God's will for me earlier? Absolutely. Which again, why we need to talk about this. And I want to ask you uh, to ask yourself if you're struggling with confusion, whether your relationship status is official or not, does this person make you feel safe and fully loved, heard, accepted in all of your ways? There were too many things I accepted for far too long because I was trying to force my way and not trust that God could do it better, that God could protect me, choose better for me. Like I said, it just, it really affected my mindset uh, for the way that like I saw myself. I remember just feeling like the the things that they told me, like I was just too sensitive or I was just too this or I was just too that. And it's like, you know, I want to talk about this relationship a lot. I want to be really open about it because it was the most serious relationship and I feel like it's the most relatable, but I also want to make sure that like, I do believe this guy to his core is a good person. I just think that there was, you know... Our directions in life, our morals are just different. And so he just, he was, this is the best way I was told. And thank you to Deanna Heron, my friend Deanna, for letting me know of this. Like he just wasn't capable of loving me the way that I needed to be loved. And that's not necessarily his problem, but um, it just, those are, we weren't aligning, you know, in our love languages, I guess, and spiritually. And that all played a factor and so he he couldn't hear me the way he needed to. He couldn't love me. He couldn't make me feel safe all the time. Um, he couldn't make me feel all, always accepted. And like I'm saying, this is such a fine line to you guys that like I can say, even now, like we are in a good place. Like we're friends. I think well of him. I wish the best for him. I know that he does the same for me too. Um, and there was, but there were so many good things about him, you know, that he did bring out of me and that, um, that did make me feel cherished. And I think that's like the really scary fine line where we can say, well, they have this, this, and this, and this, but where's the missing factor of like, he loves the Lord. Like he's seeking out the Lord. He's seeking out God's will for us. Like he does believe that it's, you know, it's right for us to not live together or whatever, or you know what I mean? Like are those morals aren't really aligning. It's like, that is the most important thing to me. That's the place where I feel the most peace, where I feel like I belong when somebody sees eye to eye like that with me, that's what I'm saying. Even in, in that sense, there's not, not to say that he's wrong or bad or any of these things, but like somebody can have so many incredible qualities and still not be God's best. And I remember that all these lingering thoughts that like just kind of were happening the last few months before my breakup. And um, I remember my, my pastor this time saying that his wife, when he met her, he was like, yeah, she was actually engaged, but it wasn't God's best. And like, I just never forgot that. I remember right, I don't know if it was right before I break up with him, I spoke to her and I was like, what does that, what does that mean? You know, like 
like you can, you can love somebody and somebody can have great qualities, but like you can still decide that like, it's not God's best for you, you guys. And it's just so sad because I feel like we, we view marriage as, well, we'll just, we'll just do it. Or it's not a big deal. Or we can get a divorce. Like that, that I have heard that being said before. I'm not saying everyone thinks that way, but, um, we forget that like God created marriage to be a covenant. Like I know that most of us, hopefully most of us only want to do it once, you know? And we just, we need to be not just preparing for a Pinterest wedding, but preparing our hearts for a long-term marriage and what a covenant really means. So basically after my breakup months later, I started to realize as I was working through some of these things that I wanted to seek some counsel. I think like when you think about things, when you ask and knock and seek, you know, God answers. And so I remember like even Googling Christian counsels um, or, uh, yeah, counselors and actually came across a girl from my women's group and she was going live on Facebook one day. And I, I literally never watched lives. I just scroll past them, you know, but something told me to go back and I clicked on it and she was talking about offering counsel for relationships and singleness and, and God's intention for all these things. And I'm like, mm, this is intriguing. Okay. <laughs> and as I'm debating this idea of going forward with this and working with her, this was the thought and idea that got me that she said, she said, the second most important decision that we make in our life is choosing our spouse. You guys, this is everything. I look back at my confusion and my denial and how that kept me trapped for so long, held me back spiritually in my purpose. My person then did not support or encourage the Danny that you hear right now. So <laughs> this Danny has been developed over questioning, you know, my real purpose and my real worth. And we have to choose wisely. And it starts with dating. Guard your hearts as you date. Seek discernment from God as you wait. And if you don't know, if you haven't heard him clearly, then keep on asking. And if it's time to walk away, do not be manipulated into thinking that you should feel guilty. You're learning, you're a human being, and you have a right to change your mind. We were not married. And I had to remind myself, Danielle, people break up. And three years is nothing in comparison to the rest of my life. And the longer, like I said, we put it off, the more hurt that we create. And I was terrified. I mean, don't get me wrong. Every single day, I feared like how it was going to work out, what was going to happen next. But I just kept seeking out God the whole entire process. I was never more prayerful than I had been in that season. I was constantly seeking counsel. And then I was obedient. And God provided for me step by step. And this is probably the biggest issue that I hear and I have observed over the years is that so many of us fear, well, what if they're the only one? This like literally breaks my heart even saying it. It's like, what if nobody else chooses me? Like, what if I'm just left behind? Like, what if I'm just going to be single if I don't end up with this person? Like, can I have better? Like, he's better than the last, you know? And that's another lie. You guys have seen so much more hurt. I used to question this all the time. When I used to do hair, the woman in my chair, and y- you guys know, <laughs> as girls especially, we open up all of our deepest, darkest secrets to our hairdressers, right? So we talked about everything, all the ins and outs of marriage and all the things. And so when it came to divorce, I used to always ask the same question. I was just really curious, and I always got the same answer. I asked them, like, did you, did you know even then, like on your wedding day, that he wasn't the one? And it was always a yes. But there was an expectation or a fear that had led them to do it anyways. You guys, this is just us deciding that we can do it better, right? That when it comes to God, when it comes down to it, like, we're telling God, like, I can choose better than you. Oof, right? <laughs> Every time I've asked myself this about guys my whole life, but God, I want him. And he has all these things that I really, really, really love. And I can't even imagine what somebody better would be like. I always hear God say, but don't you know, I can give you someone with these qualities and more every time. Like I, I look back on like these, you know, the couple of relationships that I, I really questioned that. And it was so clear that he's like, Danielle, you don't even know. Like, you don't even know how much I can exceed your expectations. Like, and you guys, you won't miss him, right? In multiple, you know, multiple ways. Like, you won't miss the current one because that you're hung up on. 
because God's provision will exceed your expectation. But you, I mean, you won't miss the one. I'm saying he won't pass you by. You won't miss out. It will be God's divine intervention. God is never late. And we need to start trusting that God is good at being a God, especially when it comes to dating and love, and that he can write our story better than we can. And there will be peace. You're not lacking anything in the meantime. God is protecting you and saving you from the hurt that you don't need to deal with. So be cautious that a temporary or light dating experience can actually cause a longer term hurt. So guard your heart and be prayerful when it comes to dating. So (laughs) don't forget or don't think that I forgot about our final subject, which is sex. And I have some very important parts to cover And if there's one thing that's sadly too normalized or yet not talked about enough, you guys, it is sex, casual sex, premarital sex. And when I'm preaching, I'm preaching by the Bible and I'm preaching off of discernment in my heart because I actually feel like I had discernment before I even knew the Bible. And I realized that this is not a popular subject, (laughs) but again, typically the things that are hard for me to share, somebody needs to hear. I do believe that sex belongs to marriage. I believe it's the most safe and it's the most sacred when it's in marriage. And yes, I am waiting. So shout out to anybody who also um, is choosing to wait and um, hold off for the one. But believe me, you guys, I've heard it all. (laughs) People who thought I was lying, people who bullied me and butchered me with questions. You know, you need to test drive the car before you buy it, right? I've heard it all. And that was really overwhelming growing up. All the rejection I experienced, the mocking, did I mention rejection? (laughs) But somehow, by the grace of God, I never let it break me. I always stood strong mentally. And I'll have you know that there were just actually a couple guys who respected me because of it anyway. So they're out there, even though they aren't God's best. I appreciate them for respecting me, but I know, right? I'm, I'm just as in shock, but they are out there. So now more than ever, I am the most confident that God will surely make it the most special and sacred when the time comes with my future spouse. So, and the truth is you guys, I don't even want it if it's not God's best, if it's not in God's design, maybe I'm just kind of different, <laughs> but I, there's such a level that I'm just not even comfortable with. Unless it's somebody that I know that I'll feel safe with and that I'll I'll just feel like it's it's God's, you know, will for me. So there are a couple things that I do want to cover on this subject. If you've made mistakes or you did things that you didn't want to or whatever, you guys, it's not too late and you're not too far gone and you can always start over and you can always make a decision today to wait again. And I've been questioned a few times on how to handle being in a current relationship and feeling the conviction of it. First off, just don't put yourself in those situations where you're tempted. If you're living together and feeling convicted, you know, start talking about moving out or if you're considering moving in because it just sounds logical. You guys, ultimately, I just encourage you to do what honors God and he will always provide. He'll always take care of you if you do what's right. You know, when we're obedient, like God does that. He did it to me. When I was obedient, I walked away from that relationship and we did share a home. Like that, that was, you know, uh, that was a logical factor that I was like, look, how am I going to pay for this? I mean, we were like, it was like a nicer apartment. It was a, we were in it like a couple months. We had just moved in. So to a logical mindset would have been like, what are you doing? Like, this doesn't make any sense financially, but I was like, okay, God, this is what you're calling me to do. And I'm going to be obedient and you're going to show up. And you, you guys, I'm t- when I say God provided every single step and the right timing and everything, he did financially where I lived next, everything. So just know like when you're obedient, when you take the right steps, when you're living righteously, like God will, will honor that and he will take care of you. I know that firsthand and I know that it's scary, but you can do it. Be brave and just know that God's got you. But also if that conversation about maybe being intimate in a current relationship, whatever that looks like, if that sounds intimidating to you to have that conversation, please know that you are deserving of somebody who does respect you. 
and is not going to guilt you into this. And again, you are allowed to change your mind and say no. So those considering to wait and struggling to wait, you guys know that God gives us a spirit of self-control. I've gone through different seasons and I've prayed through this and it is possible. Believe me, he will give you the strength to live righteously. I fully believe that. Just ask that he, he gives that to you. And I was literally just talking to a girl in my DMs about this. Ironically, the topic of waiting and saying no to current opportunities, especially with a lie, well, you've already done it, so what's the difference? How hard it is to live righteously and hold off. For us to be able to have that final conversation, though, with our future spouse, right? To tell that next, that last person, like, I decided to wait for you. I chose to wait again. And all the hurt, all the rejection, all the mocking, all the uncomfortable situations and conversations will all have been worth it. It will all have just been like a faded memory when we get to have that one conversation with our our spouse, right? So I want you to know you are valued. You are precious. God wastes no time. And our mistakes aren't really mistakes. You can always start over. And God has big, big plans for your love story, greater plans than Chris Lane, okay? (laughs) But no matter what your past looks like, you have a choice for your future. You're not forgotten or unchosen. You deserve to take your time and tune into the honesty behind your emotions and what you know you want. Start having conversations, even if it starts with yourself. Ask yourself if it's denial or if it's God trying to remind you that you were made for more. I have no doubt the most peaceful relationship will include God at the center of it, and you won't have any doubts. There is so much peace that I have in my walk right now and in my purpose that I have pursued outside of that previous ungodly relationship, and I can't even begin to imagine what walking my purpose with my life partner will look like when God does align our paths. And until then, I'll trust his timing and I'll serve God while I wait. And I don't want anything less than his best, and neither should you. Again, you guys, I say all of this with so much love. You are so worthy, and I hope that you truly, truly believe it for yourself. I don't have all the answers, but I hope that you related on some level to this episode's topic. And if you guys have any specific questions about your current situation and you want to open up to me and you need somebody to listen to or pray with, I would be more than happy. So you can direct message me on Instagram, my personal um, Instagram, which is Danny Cakes, D-A-N-N-N-I Cakes, or immeasurably.more.podcast. I check both of those DMs. Um, I'd be happy to talk to you. And like I said, pray with you through your situation. And if anything, just be listening here. But I would love to know, you guys, what you want to hear from me. I want to go into a Q&A on this next episode. We are 10 episodes in officially. I can't believe it. It's so crazy. And so if there's anything I've covered over these last 10 episodes that you have questions about, I would love to answer those on this following episode that we record. So love to hear your feedback, what you want to hear next, um, either whether I drop a question box or you just want to message me, let me know what it is that you want to hear from me, what you have questions about, and I will share all those answers on the next episode. So don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe, and I will leave you guys with this. Proverbs 3130, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised.